me again. All right, imagine being the owner of property near the U.S. Mexico border and having thousands of illegals. That's going to keep me up all night. It really is. Trespassing on your land. Next guest is here to tell us how he went from protecting his property to a court battle where he lost in Tucson, Arizona. Roger Barnett and his attorney, Dave Hardy. Roger, how are you, sir? Oh, fine, thank you, sir. Okay, so Roger, tell the story here on. You have kicked off, if I'm not mistaken, 14,000 illegal aliens off of your property. Do you have one of those That's clickers? Right, uh, <laughs> no, I just uh, just estimating, and then uh, after a while, we started keeping track of it on a calendar, and going from calendar to calendar, year to year, we'd add them up, and then it just it come up to 14,000. This is this is on uh, your pro this picture is on your property here. These are the people sitting there. Uh, they crossed my property, went to the uh, one across the street, I think, if that's the one you're talking about. Okay. Uh, there's myself, my wife, and a couple of Border Patrol agents. Uh, yes, uh, there, I think there was close to uh, over 60 in that group. Okay, now, then, I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this happened on a weekend. You've rounded up about 14,000 people just in your spare time on weekends. That's right. Uh, go out to the ranch uh, from uh, my uh, other home in Sierra Vista, my office there. Uh, get to the ranch in the afternoon, Friday afternoon, stay until Sunday afternoon. Okay. And uh, uh, that's just on weekends only. All right. So um, now you kicked these people off your land. You called police. You told them to stay there. You had a gun on them. Um, this happened when it was uh, March 7th, 2004. They turned around and sued you. And said that you were abusive, that you kicked them, et cetera, et cetera. Did you kick them? That's what they said. Uh, I tapped a gal's foot to uh, get her attention. She was unresponsive with uh, two other women. And so I wanted to get their attention, move them uh, to the group, to the bigger group to, for my protection. Uh, as far as holding a gun on them, uh, Glenn, I, whenever my dog alerted, they were in some brush and they were in an indentation in the, in the ground. And okay. I couldn't see them. They were hiding from me. Okay. And so... Uh, I pulled my gun out, went around the group, made sure they didn't have any weapons, no rocks. They, they weren't a threat to me, I figured, and that's when I holstered my gun. Uh, no more than a minute. Okay, and you called police or the Border Patrol, and they came and picked them up. That's right, yes, All right. definitely. Now, Dave, how in God's green earth did a guy who is... Do, I mean, do we not have a right to life, liberty, and, and, and the pursuit of happiness? Do we not have a right to protect ourselves and our property anymore? How did he end up paying, what is it, almost $70,000 to these illegal aliens? Uh, the jury came back on a, a couple of uh, verdicts, and that, that's for what the for? jury. How? Uh, I, well, I ought to mention they started in with 16 plaintiffs, 12 of them lost. They started suing three people, two of them won. They lost all claims for attorney's fees and they were going to try to stack those up on Roger. They brought in nine attorneys, did a little case in Tucson, Arizona. They brought in three uh, high-priced attorneys from New York. They're going to run up the lawyer bills to 500000 maybe a million, stick Roger with that. Well, it didn't come through because they lost on the federal claims and those were the only claims that okay. carry attorney's fees. We may now be in position to claim from them. Okay, so, so, so Dave, this is going to make Roger's life a living hell now. If you can collect any money from an American citizen just by coming over across the border onto their land and saying, oh, he abused me, this is, this is a new way to make money now, isn't it? Well, it's not the first time they've cooked up stories about Roger. They're quite famous for it. I mean, yeah, come on in. Claim that a, a guy who behaved reasonably went totally out of control. It's only you and him out there in the wilderness. There's no other witnesses. See if someone believes you. Well, Roger, you I do mean, look one pretty. Handy thing. You look pretty menacing there. <laughs> oh, I am 66 years old. Yes, <laughs> I know. Hey, hey, hey! Whoa, whoa! Don't slow down there, Chief. I was just saying. Yeah. I was just saying. See, you went all crazy. Yeah, I got to hey, get an hey, attorney. Yeah, gl gl Hey, Glenn, uh, these people, uh, at the time, that was four years ago, so I was 62 years old. All of them guys, uh, they were anywhere from 20 years old to 30 years old. Uh, you know, I had to protect myself. Okay. I need to protect myself, myself and my family. I, I don't know where, what country I'm living in anymore. You have a right to protect yourself. <laughs> They're on your property. Roger, Dave, oh, thanks. I'm beginning to winter, too. Yeah, thank you very I'll tell much. You when... Yeah, go ahead, real quick. Oh. 
I'll tell you, when I went out to Rogers Ranch to scope out the scene, I brought my 45. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see, they're crazy. Thanks very much. I appreciate it, guys. Now, got to turn.